I will no longer lightly walk behind a one of you who fear me. Be afraid. I plan to give you reasons for your jumpy fits and facial tics. I will not walk politely on the pavements anymore, and this is dedicated in particular to those who hear my footsteps or the insubstantial rattling of my grocery cart, then turn around, see me, and hurry on away from this impressive terror I must be. I plan to blossom bloody on an afternoon surrounded by my comrades seeing terrible revenge in merciless accelerating rhythms, but I have watched a blind man studying his face. I have set the table in the evening and sat down to eat the news. Regularly I have gone to sleep. There is no one to forgive me. The dead do not give a damn. I live like a lover who drops her dime into the phone just as the subway shakes into the station, wasting her message, canceling the question of her call, fulminating or forgetful but late, and always after the fact that could save or condemn me, I must become the action of my fate. How many of my brothers and my sisters will they kill before I teach myself retaliation? Shall we pick a number? South Africa, for instance, do we agree that more than 10,000 in less than a year, but that less than 5,000 are slaughtered in more than six months? Well, what is the matter with me? I must become a menace to my enemies. And if I, if I ever let you slide, who should be extirpated from my universe, who should be cauterized from Earth completely, law and order jerk-offs of the first, the terrorist degree, then let my body fail my soul in its bedeviled lecheries. And if I, if I ever let love go, because the hatred of the whisperings become a phantom dictate I obey, in lieu of impulse and realities, the blossoming flamingos of my wild mimosa trees, then let Love frees me out. I must become, I must become a menace to my enemies.